Joining the show tonight, the man under center this weekend for the Pitt State Gorillas in front of 10,000 people in what is referred to as the jungle slayer of bulldogs, Chad Dodson. Appreciate you having me. <laughs> Good to have you on here, my man. I, I told you before we got going, it felt like uh, I could have had you on at any point throughout the, the last season or two, and for some reason I just haven't reached out and made this happen. I don't know why and what made me not do that, but I'm glad to have you here now because what better time to talk about the Gorillas than right now and the win that you guys are coming off of. Yes, sir. Such a such an awesome piece, man. And really, just to build off that, what a freaking environment! That number ten thousand. Did it feel like twenty? Oh, it felt it felt insane. I mean, <laughs> from the time we we so for our gorilla walk, we walk out of our indoor facility. Oh yeah, and it's, it's a, a just a stretch down a path, and um, from the time we walked out, I was standing next to Jack Barkley, one of our captain linebackers, and we both looked at each other like, "This is real deal right here." <laughs> That is so neat. And we know all about the Gorilla Walk. We've talked quite about it um, on this particular show. Just because of the fact that, one, is just a neat thing that you don't see as much at, potentially at this level of football. But two, because I've never seen an empty Gorilla Walk. Like, everyone right. shows up to the Gorilla Walk. And, and just a couple quick Google searches here. It's telling me that uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas, population of just at least the city there is about 20,000. You're telling me half the city showed up on, uh, on Saturday? Uh, this town shuts down when it's game day. It's pretty cool. I mean, the tailgates, the gorilla walk, uh, every game day here that I've been a part of, the community shows out, and uh, they did their job this Saturday. They they gave Fair State some trouble. Dude, I that I don't doubt that at all. The, I mean, the environment, obviously your guys' stadium is is definitely regarded as one of the best, if not the best in the country, especially when it comes to that atmosphere piece. Because uh, as some teams know, you can go out and build a hell of a stadium. If people don't have their ass in the seats – it's just going to echo. I don't know exactly what happened. Something yep. like that, right? Yep. It, it's, it just looks weird. Uh, <laughs> you know, some stadiums are kind of smaller, but they fill them out and it's cool. But we're, we're fortunate to have kind of both, you know, a big stadium yeah. and, and to pack it out. So it's pretty cool. Absolutely, man. Not only was that a great way for your squad to kick off 24, I mean, stating the obvious, but how about one being the first game as head coach, Coach Anthony there, a top five opponent, these massive expectations for you guys coming into the season inside the MIAA and on the national scale, and then just the cherry on top is the uniforms, the silverback helmets, so much hype and just anticipation, uh, and, and obviously you guys capitalize on it, but good Lord. I mean, that is just, that's got to be tough to navigate when there's so many different things that lead up into a game day like that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I give credit to all our guys. You know, there was a lot of noise, a lot of hype going into this game, but uh, we're very good at tuning out all that outside noise and just sticking to what we do best, and that's going one to know every week. And uh, like you mentioned, Coach Anthony, this was his, uh, his first win here as a head coach, but what a lot of people don't know is he was actually here in – uh, 2020, 2021, oh, yeah. yep. and 22. So he uh, he was our defensive coordinator there and uh, just an awesome dude, a, a great coach. The players love him. Um, so when he made the decision or when, when he was hired as the head coach here, uh, it was a no-brainer for all the guys to come back and, and to stay here and, and to buy into what he's doing because he's an awesome coach. That's great. You don't see that, again, you don't see that very often because when the, there's a change at uh, the helm there, so to speak, usually that means there's a good part of the ship that's uh, testing the waters. That might right. be one of the better right. analogies I've used on the show and its history. Um, that kind of lined up pretty well. But um, I will say, you guys do a good job of blocking out that noise. Whoever's running the socials, like that team over there, did a great job on capitalizing on kind of this national spotlight for you guys. Also, I think even threw my voice into one of the edits, so I, I can officially like die tomorrow, and I've made it because I got thrown into Pitt State edit. I, I literally came downstairs. I showed my roommate. I was like, they put your boy in at it. Like I'm, I'm ready. I, if I, as if I wasn't already ready to go, I, I was pretty pumped up. So uh, kudos to them for sure. Cause they have, they have definitely capitalized on the content uh, promoting you guys in that environment, which I love, but uh, let's talk about, you know, just the final, the score, right? When you glance at a box score, holding Ferris state to three points, something we simply have just not seen. Right, the last time I had to look, actually, last time was 2017. They were on the road at Ashland, who was uh, it was a big time contest. But the fact that hasn't happened in almost a decade tells me all I need to know about this defense. Tell me what else do I need to know about this defense and what you learned about them on Saturday? Yeah, uh, Fair State, like you, like everyone knows. I mean, they're a great program. 
They've had a ton of success these past few years, obviously going back to back national championships. Uh, they're a really awesome program, a well-respected program. Um, but our defense is next to none. Uh, if they're not the best defense in the country, I don't know who is. Um, and they've been like that for multiple years in a row now. Uh, and as an offense, when you go against that caliber of a defense every single day in practice uh, and, and spring ball and, you know, throughout the summer and, and into fall camp, I mean, what better what better contest is there? I mean, we're going against the best defense day in and day out, and that just makes our offense that much better too. 100%. And I would imagine in some ways too it almost ups the ante and puts even more pressure on you guys to, to want to go out and succeed because – we know these guys on the other side of the ball, that 11 is going to go out there and do their thing every given Saturday. We need to go out there and step up and, like, do our part. Is that, I'm assuming, a lot of the sentiment? Not that you guys haven't been able to do that, but, man, that's got to light a fire under your ass. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and, I mean, this weekend our defense was doing such a great job. I mean, we had four turnovers, I think it was, a few, few interceptions, a few yep. fumble recoveries. We had one on a kickoff. Um, but in the second half, we, we, with how well our defense was playing, we didn't have to be super aggressive on offense. We went out. We had a 15-play, nine-minute drive to yep. run the clock out. I think our defense played 43 total snaps in that whole game, which is uh, pretty crazy. So uh, we didn't score a ton of points on offense. We, we only had one touchdown in the day. But, I mean, we had a ton of plays, a ton of long drives that, that ran the clock out and uh, ultimately put, put some points on the board and uh, was able to get the job done. I think the only thing scarier than a talented defense is a talented defense, excuse me, that is fresh, right? Yep. And when they're not out there playing 80, 90 snaps or something just absolutely absurd, which sometimes you do see because when a team typically they're stacked on one side of the ball, what does that mean for the other side? Maybe they're lacking a little bit of depth or talent or other things, and, and you guys certainly are not in that boat. But when you have those guys with fresh legs that are able to go out there and make plays, I mean, you said it. And then also you run into the grindstone that is Pittsburgh State offense that is going to just hold the ball and play keep away for nine minutes. And that is something that very few offenses in the country can do. You guys are one of the select few that does, like you you just, you know, you said, it does so much for your defense. But let's talk about offensively, you guys. A lot of big question marks uh, coming into this season. The one, and you kind of mentioned earlier, Coach Wright leaves, you bring in Coach Anthony, and yes, familiar face to the program, but a defensive-minded coach at that. So maybe something of trying to figure out how that's going to, to go along. You lose your two top pass catchers, and obviously Devin Garrison, who we've had on here, but Colby Katzis as well. And I certainly wouldn't go as far as to say as people, quote-unquote, counted you out, because you still were mm -hmm. giving your respect, especially in the league and on the national level. But, you know, maybe they, and we, I'll put this on myself as well, didn't give enough respect to the guys that remained on the roster, that didn't jump ship. Like you said, you retained a lot of really good talent. Was that the general feeling from the people there? And was it nice to have a little bit more bulletin board material maybe than years prior? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think we were a little counted out for sure. And, you know, we can use it as bulletin board material, but like I said earlier, we try and tune all that stuff out because we know what we do here every single day. Uh, we're prepared and we're ready to go every single Saturday. Good answer. Uh, like That's the radio interview coming out. That's good answer right there. That's <laughs> yeah. good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, we lost Devin Garrison, two-time All-American tight end. Um, and then Colby Katzis went with Coach Wright to Northern yep. Arizona. Um, two awesome players for us. Uh but, I mean, we bring back both of our running backs from last year, Noah Hernandez, Cleo, Cleo Chandler. We bring back a stacked room of receivers uh, that have been in the program for three, four, five, six years. Uh, and Jack Roberts, Jake Bogdan, Karan Parkman, Cam Gillespie. We bring back Christian Carter, uh, oh, yeah. who went to Memphis. Um, so bringing him back brings a ton of speed to our offense. We have some playmakers on offense. And then we bring in uh, Will Huggins, a, a KU transfer tight end, 6'7", huge pass catching tight end for us. Um, great in run blocking too. Uh, and then we have an experienced group of O linemen that have been here too. I mean, we yep. have a lot of dudes that have been in this program for a long time and gave everything they have uh, for this place. So, I mean, there was some question marks and we did lose some guys, but we have a lot of guys that have been here a long time on both That's sides of the that's the best thing about question marks is they can be answered and they can be answered rather quickly when you go out and when you do what you guys did um, on Saturday. And obviously we're familiar with uh, with Trace Jeffries and coming out of that spot and, you know, being a, in a leadership role and kind of a captain for you guys to lose him. But again, you, you said there's a group there that's got a lot more depth than just one guy and it takes five of them to be out there at all times and you've got a great group there. 
you mentioned it. We're already getting the Garrison uh, comparisons, if you will. Will Huggins, he comes in. It looks like you guys just have another freak at the tight end position. How fun has it been uh, to just get him started and to see some of that potential of what he can do for this offense? Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, from the time that he's came in, he's been fully invested in what we do. Uh, I mean, the, he's worked his ass off since, since the time he's got here. Uh, and he's just a great player and a great dude. He cares about the team, the success of the team. And, uh, yeah, I'm really fired up to see what he does this year. Oh, yeah. And you you mentioned the size. I didn't even know off the top of my head. That one-handed grab on the left sideline right there. Oh, that was nice. That was, was really sweet. nice. I kind of lost it. I was standing behind the old line. <laughs> I lost it, and I heard the crowd go crazy. I saw him get up celebrating. <laughs> That's great, dude. Um, he's got, you know, hopefully the first of, of many for him and, and for you guys. But, um, you know, to speak on on you, I guess, a little bit more specifically, you're a guy that's been a gorilla through and through, and you've been through this program. Your bio says you're the second in school history for career passing yards, third for touchdown passes. When I check the record books, I think you're number one. Is that something you're aware of, or should I shut up and let you play football? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm second and third. Okay. Um, yeah. Clear in the air. Yeah, we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, just upward trajectory from here. But but really, though, you've been a captain the last two seasons. And what has this program done for you being in that leadership position? And how has it helped you grow into that role? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I first came here, I, I had never heard of Pittsburgh State. Uh, and, and I didn't really know much about Division II football as a whole. Um, I moved 17 hours away uh, as an 18-year-old kid to a place I've never been. Uh, and I am so grateful for that, for the whole experience. I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, I'm truly blessed to play for this university, this community, uh, the coaches, the players I've been, a been able to be around in my time here has been, has been really awesome. So uh, this place means everything to me. It's a home away from home for sure. They might, now you might be putting it at it. They might cut that for some of their promotional material. You know that. <laughs> yeah. They might, uh, but you know the only way to finish the conversation off talking about Missouri Southern. What do you guys got to do to keep the train rolling against the Lions this weekend on the road? Yeah, I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but every single week it doesn't matter who we play on Saturday. Um, we're going to prepare every single week like like it's a championship game because in the MIAA top to bottom, anybody can beat anybody. It's a great conference, uh, and every week is a championship game. So. Uh, We'll get back after it tomorrow. We got our first day of, of practice and prep tomorrow on Missouri Southern. So uh, get some stuff dialed up and, and get rolling. And as a team, too, that obviously you guys don't like, how do I say? Like, I'm not, you know, you guys expect to make the playoffs. Like, you expect to go through and win these games and do that. And it's not a cocky, it's not arrogance, it's a confidence in the ability that you have in that locker room. Does that preparation, I, I would assume from my end, get just jacked up another notch knowing that? We have to figure out how to prepare correctly because, yes, obviously you're going to prepare for a Missouri Southern, but you don't want to get to the playoffs and get to a Grand Valley or a Harding or a UCM, whatever one of these teams, and then figure out how to prepare for a playoff game and a playoff atmosphere. I'd imagine that those conversations happen now and, and really focusing how you guys prepare and prep for these opponents. Yeah, for sure. Every week is, is the same preparation. I mean, what we do day in and day out doesn't change no matter who we play. Uh, whether it's Missouri Southern, whether it's Ferris State, whether it's week three, four, five of the playoffs, we're going to prepare the same exact way every week. Yeah, you need it because uh, Super Region 3 is full of like – everyone's worst nightmare, um, at least for this next season until it switches up in, uh, in 2025. But, uh, Chad, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you for, uh, for coming on here and chatting ball with me. Really excited to continue to follow along with you guys. That's uh, hopefully the first of, of many big-time games for you and company down there, the Gorillas, man.